Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to the Blob campaign. That's right. We are going to be the Blob as Jaya Varman, and our goal here is to try to make the Stockholm Syndrome game work. Now, if you don't know, Bikini Body of Rainbow Six fame challenged me to try to conquer the entire map without ever actually capturing a city. And I wasn't allowed to use Eleanor. Now, in my first attempt, I tried Sweden, but this time we're going to try it as the Khmer. And that's why it's called the Blob Challenge. The only game mode we're playing with is Dramatic Ages. And, there, you know, I'll quickly scroll through these things so you can see the settings. Who cares about the settings? Let's just get into the game. Boom. Let us begin. Pack it up, pack it in. That is probably the greatest Khmer holy site that you will literally ever see in your entire life. I cannot believe I rolled such an incredible holy site on my very first game roll. What is actually happening? Well, technically, it's like my second game roll because I did a quick like 30 minute test game just to like remember how to play the Khmer. Um, but goddamn, look at that six food, six, that, it, Jesus Christ. And our entire plan in the early game is to actually rush holy sites. My God, I actually don't like our settling location. I kind of wish I was on this plains hill. I mean, this aqueduct kind of works because I can put a couple of farms next to it. Kind of works. Man, it is so hard to pass up this start location. Now, the problem is we don't have a two food, two production tile, so we're going to have a very slow start here. However, that's not too important as the Khmer, as far as I, as far as I understand it, because our goal isn't to, like, get anywhere quick. Our goal is to get huge as quickly as possible. Now, as much as I love this three food, or this three production tile, I would like... Do I really want to get a settler out early? Could I... Could I do a builder-based opening? I don't have any improvable tiles. I'm rushing astrology, so a builder wouldn't work. Maybe a monument-based opener? A unit-based, maybe triple scout opener? Is this the rare triple scout opener that we want to do here? Surely not. Maybe this is the rare double scout opener, and then in the near future we hope we like grow the bananas to buy? I don't know. It's hard to tell exactly what our plans are. Oh, progress towards foreign trade. And we met Auckland, who is a very nice saucy boy who will give us plus one production towards buildings, districts and wonders. And if we can get uh, up to friends with them, our coastal cities will be better, which might be helpful. Now, we are playing on a Pangea map, and that's just to make it easier to do because because I can't actually capture people with anything other than loyalty. They all need to be on the same landmass as me or else I just won't be able to capture them, right? Because they'll be too far away. Also, there's no barbarians in this game. Um, I've been finding that the game is just more fun without them. Now, do I want to work the two food tile? These lo almost line up perfectly. So maybe next turn I'll switch to the two food tile. Because I want to finish the second scout at the exact same time I finish growing to two populations. So it's going to require a little bit, just a little bit of worker micromanagement. All right, we're down to five and six. So we're almost synced up. Yoink, plus one new population. Never mind. We can just work this tile now. Ah, amazing. In fact, we could switch to Settler right now, which will sync exactly up with when we want to finish our, like, get, unlock the Holy Site, which is way better than the second Scout. Although, I could delay my Holy Site by four turns to get a second Scout, and second Scout is honestly pretty good. It seems pretty good. The more I know about the world, the less I have to rely on my Warrior to defend. Yeah, I think second Scout here is pretty good, considering we just found a one tile natural impossible wonder. Now, this opens up an opportunity for us to go uber fast holy site now if we go uber fast holy site we could potentially get feed the world now one of the big problems you run into when you're going for an early religion is that feed the world the one that gives you food from whole from uh holy site buildings is probably the most sought after building like the most sought after belief by the ai in the entire game so if we go scout settler holy site we can probably get work ethic which is incredible or we could get the extra growth to make our cities even bigger. I kind of want to go, ooh, man, that is a really tough choice. In my heart, I feel like work ethic is just better when you're playing the Khmer, because you're going to have pretty good adjacency on most of your holy sites. Oh, dearie, dearie, dearie me. I'm actually having a really hard time making a choice here. I feel like the fact that we have access to a Signy settle really means that we want to get those settlers out. So 
Yeah, I'm going to go with Settler into Holy Site and forget about getting the... Ah. Uh, oh. This changes things lightly, the positioning of this fresh water, actually. And the fact that we're towards the north of the map. Uh, you know what? Maybe, maybe, yeah, I think I'm going to go for the early settler. I think that's what we do. Now, I think the one exception to the, um, to the conquest rule is I'm allowed to attack city-states. Like, if I need to kill a city-state to get loyalty pressure on another civ, I'll allow myself to do that. I'll try not to do that. But if I have to, I absolutely will. Hello, we have actually found quite a few early city-states and we've got first envoy with all of them. Jerusalem, Mogadishu and Auckland. Auckland is the coastal production. Jerusalem is the holy cities uh, act as ho uh, holy sites act as holy cities, which means they get 4x religion pressure on all cities within 10 tiles. And Mogadishu, which is immune traders. All very cool city states. Great scientists send a trade route and build a spearman. We could do two of those quite easily, namely um, the build a spearman and send a trade route. The earn a great scientist might be a little bit more difficult in this particular game. There's astrology. Bing, bang, bosh. Let's take rangers so we can move a little bit faster through woods and rainforest. That's my one of my preferred promotions. It looks very woodsy heavy over here. Now we have astrology. We would like to pick up mining because we do want to get a quarry so we can get masonry. And then when we get ancient walls, we can get our aqueducts faster because rushing aqueducts is like a pretty viable strategy on Khmer, in my opinion. It gives you access to one of the Khmer's biggest power spikes because like if you look at the Khmer's bonuses, uh, cities with an aqueduct get plus one amenity from entertainment and plus one faith for every population, as well as farms get plus one food if they're adjacent to an aqueduct and plus one faith if they're adjacent to a holy site. So Khmer really wants those aqueducts kind of ASAP, really. I have a trickle of faith from Jerusalem, so I think I can get away with plus one production, and I will go ahead and plug in survey, because I have two scouts, which means twice as many opportunities for potential experience on those scouts. Now, I would like to get to early empire. I haven't met another player, so I'm not worried about being attacked, so craftsmanship is a lower priority. I could theoretically also do a theology rush this game, which is not entirely unheard of. I've never done a theology rush, but maybe Khmer is the sieve to do it with. I should also totally come in here and actually place this incredible plus five holy site, which is going to give me six food when I finish it. As well, I should start considering where my next cities are going. The nice thing about Khmer, because you're so incentivized to go ahead and build aqueducts, settling slightly off of a, a river is totally fine if it allows you to cram another city into that river. For example, if I were to settle here, this would leave open this tile here for a very nice aqueduct and thus leave room on this river for a pretty damn decent holy site which really only gets better if I put an aqueduct beside it. Now another plus five. Hmm. It might be a bit hard to find a good holy site for this city but aqueducts and holy sites that's absolutely a thing that we want to rush in every city especially if we decide to go for work ethic which I think might be the pantheon of choice this game. Oh hello tribal village. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is this look? Uh, somebody is hacking. Somebody is hacked my game. My, I, I actually, I've actually, I'm actually cheating. I, I admit it. I all of my runs are fake. Okay, all of my runs are fake. <laughs> How is this possible? How is this is like the second time in my last like four or five series that I found like a a, a relic on a religious sieve super early into the game. Now thinking about how I want to settle around here, obviously as Khmer, you want to build your farms on these wheat tiles if you can. And I think this is actually a pretty decent holy site location right there. Um, and which also kind of tells me that an aqueduct somewhere here might fit nicely. Now we could, I think in my mind, uh, I kind of wish this was just like a slightly longer. I wish it just had one more tile in my river because Instinctively, I want to settle on the gypsum and then put an aqueduct to here because this is just a fantastic city. But I also want to take advantage of Signy and maybe the way to do that is to pop in here, pop down a nice city. One, two, three. Ah, oh, it's in range. Damn. Ah, oh, boo. No. No. Boo. Well, maybe there are options. 
This is such a good city, though, if I settle it. God damn. And I mean, I guess with Auckland in the game, and if I decide to keep Auckland around, my coastal cities aren't the worst thing in the world. They're probably going to be my lowest priority, though, because we just get so much value from being on rivers. Try to think, what if I move this whole operation one tile to the left? God, that's still so good. That is actually like a pretty nasty industrial zone in there. Hell yeah. I think this is the setup. Unfortunately, that sugar is kind of in an awkward spot. It would be a really nice industrial zone between these two cities as well. There is a plus four holy site down here for this city. Planning my empire out. I think I'm going to go for it. Holy site on the way. I imagine, oh, surprisingly, other people haven't started earning great people points. Somebody is going to build Stonehenge this game, though. I 100% guarantee it. Absolutely. It happens every single time I try to do a fast religion game. Somebody builds uh, a Stonehenge and then I don't get the cool beliefs. It's just it's every time. Now, when you're playing Khmer, there's only one, especially when you're trying to be the blob. Come on, we're trying to be like a, a 1970s or possibly even 50s, um, you know, a sci fi horror monster. We got to be the blob. That means we want as much housing and growth and amenities as possible. River goddess, that's ya boy. Now, if we think about this holy site that we have coming along here, it's going to be six faith, six food, two housing, two amenities, and whatever else we get from the buildings and faith uh, uh, beliefs. Ooh, that sounds absolutely balanced. Thank you very much. I, you know what? There is a certain point of satisfaction you reach with a game like Civ where you just, you've become so good at it. Oh no, Maori, the dream killer, the run killer. You better be on this continent, I swear to God. Wait, what did you spawn next to? Why the hell is your tiles got like culture and f science on them? What are your magical abilities? Where is the science coming from? I'm so confused. How is this possible? Oh, it's T. For some reason the icon isn't showing up. This better not be like a city settled on an island, I swear to God. Now, I would love to build the holy site right now, but I reckon... Actually, maybe the holy site is the right call. Yeah, what if we go fast holy site? Then we have two cities cranking out work ethic. Hmm, the potential here smells delicious. One big problem I have noticed is that we are like extremely isolated. Uh, so this is definitely going to be an ancestral hall game where we spam out infinite settlers. And of course he's denouncing me, sure. Seems reasonable that he would like instantaneously just like completely denounce me. There's also like part of me that if I'm going to go for an ancestral hall game, that means government and diplomatic quarter in my capital, as well as all the trade districts I can fit. Which kind of says early Magnus. Hmm, well, maybe I'm going to go for a different kind of wide game. Hey, Simon Bolivar, we would love to sample your hospitality. So he's over here in Papillon. Let's send him a delegation so he doesn't hate us. Oh, plus three error score for a beautiful holy site. Now, we are playing in the Great Ages mode, or the, the, the Rise and Fall of Ages, whatever that one's called. The, the Golden Age, what is it even called? Oh my God, am I dumb? I actually can't find it on the list. Dramatic Agents. <laughs> <laughs> We're playing with dramatic ages. So the threat of a dark age is a real threat. We need to get more era score ASAP. I could buy a trader and begin trading with Jerusalem. There are no barbs. I kind of like this plan. There's an envoy with Jerusalem. Hello. Nice to meet you. Mary. Wait. <laughs> His city's already flipping. <laughs> he just settled the city. I was actually, this is where I was considering settling, settling actually. I was going to make like a mausoleum city. I was going to do like a harbor here, then maybe do mausoleum and just have a city that makes tons of culture and faith. <laughs> I can't believe he did that. That's, that's, that's incredible. Oh my God. Hopefully that works out for me. I really want that to work out, but I'm amazed that he's already like looking... This might not, must not be that far apart if he's already over here with a settler. Hello, Hungary. Nice to meet you. Nobody annoy. I haven't met anyone annoying yet, which is like, re I'm really happy about. I haven't, well, I mean, Maori is super annoying. Let's be real. Because uh, he's probably going to attack me and I'm going to have to play defense. But nobody like who does like create, like I haven't met a Russia. I haven't met Russia yet, which is honestly like a big boon. All right, there goes Stonehenge. So first religion is gone. Ooh, a meteor shower over here. Let's go see if we can grab that. Oh, they didn't take, they didn't take, they didn't take feed. 
They didn't take the feeding religion. They didn't take... Dare I tempt the gods by running holy sites prayers when this guy might declare a war on me? Oh. Hear me out. We'll just do, we'll just do two holy site prayers. We'll just do two. It's not that many. Okay. It's only two. Two, two is, is only one more than one and it's one less than three. He has another settler. What the actual hell? Oh, right. Because when he settles the city, he gets a new settler. That's how, that's how the deity AI bonus works. That's obnoxious. Why did he choose here? Of all places, I feel like I'm playing multiplayer with an asshole. That's what I feel like right now. First holy side prayer done. Early empire boosted. <laughs> Close to second religion. Four turns until the city flips independent. Could I conquer it with like slingers and warriors? Oh, it flipped independent. Perhaps I could yoink a builder. I think I just have to play defense here. Oh, I'm going to have to recapture my own city. It's going to flip independent. I'm glad I didn't build a monument because I think the monument and walls and stuff like that gets destroyed when a city flips. Oh, wow. He really, he really wants to fight me. Let's quickly nab a couple of free, well, free warriors, a couple of, a couple of warriors. Oh, man. We're like very close. We're incredibly close to getting our religion. And honestly, all things considered, the map doesn't look too bad for us. It looks, it looks relatively okay. We're going to the next area in five turns. So anything I do that takes less than five turns in here is pointless. So we'll just do a holy site prayer. We'll get a promotion on this guy. Bada bing, bada boom. Kayapoi will flip to me in a few turns. We have access to early empire. I think, th does discipline work against independent cities? I actually think it might. I cannot remember whether or not that actually works. There's a great person. I don't think founding a religion gets me out of this dark age. But we will be a Thicus Maximus. That is what our religion will be about. We can get feed the world. Oh my god, it's so gross. But I mean, work ethic is so good for us this game too. But I feel like we have to go for feed the world just because it's like a giant meme. And I've never been able to get the feed the world build on Khmer before. Feed the world, Gurdwaras, hello. Welcome to the Big Chungus religion. We are now cultivating mass on a scale on seen in human history. No person has ever seen the kind of mass that we will cultivate this game. The thickness of this empire will blot out the sun in all directions for all people to be blinded. Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. We are in a dark age, which comes with its own downsides, but also comes with some upsides in the terms of these cards. Now, now, now. We must levy this situation to our advantage, namely by killing units in combat, mortal combat, you, one might say. So one downside to my holy site build in uh, the Dramatic Ages mode is that it's kind of vulnerable to this kind of nonsense. Where your city flips independent, and then it's really annoying to get it back, and then more barbs come out of the fog of war. And then it's constantly spawning barbs, and you start losing units. It, you know, it, it was expected. It wasn't unexpected that this would happen. It doesn't make it any less annoying. Like, if I know you're going to flick me on, the, on my nose, it doesn't, like, remove how annoying that is. It just means that I'm mentally prepared for it. Okay, we need to have a conversation about these cities spawning units back to back. I can totally, I'm on board with them spawning units, but you shouldn't be able to spawn a unit every single turn of your existence. I'm sorry, that's too much. That's too many units. It's just too many. Because now it's turn 54, I'm on one city, <laughs> and my game is completely derailed because of this one city flipping independent. And then the slinger gets into the city, of course. Of course the slinger gets into the city. Like, why wouldn't it get into the city? No more spawning. You've already spawned. You're, you have spawned all of your allocated spawns for today, okay? You, you have made enough annoying units for me to fight. Finally, we can deal with this. I was laughing earlier <laughs> when, when Maori, like, settled that awful city in the middle of nowhere. But who's laughing now? Hint, it's not me. I'm crying, okay? I'm crying. Call Potato, he's crying right now. We got our city back. It's good news. Let's get to work on that monument. We're supposed to be building settlers right now. That's the game plan. But we got screwed. And I want to point out, I got screwed despite the fact that I built two 
scouts this game and scouted aggressively. Okay, I want it known. I want let the record show that I got screwed despite doing the build that maximizes how much error score you get. How are you killing my slinger? That's a full health. What the hell? You don't get combat bonuses. You're just a basic guy. Yeah, I'm calling shenanigans on this. However, this free city is flipping towards me, so we get it. We we do get an extra city out of this at the very least. I guess we had to have something hold us back a little bit because we got the Tigni. You know what I mean? It it makes sense. You're not having my shroud of Turin. Get the hell out of here. God, that's a really high population capital. Seven population at this turn of the game is kind of insane. Let's be real. Now, we want to be building settlers, but I need to crack out one builder because I have a couple of things to do. I need to get a builder and ancient walls. I need to get both of those. Because we're, ru we're rushing, we're rushing aqueducts, which means builder and ancient walls. And then we'll backfill in for cities. I don't know if this is a good opener, but I, it's certainly a new way to play. And I, you know me, I'm always looking for a new way to play. How are you at full loyalty now? How have you grown? Oh my God. This is just absolute, just illegal, illegal activity happening here. That's a lot of military that they have. It's like Potato McWhiskey. Anyone does anything that he doesn't like, that's illegal. That's a crime. <laughs> You're breaking the law. How dare you? How true? Any, any truers? Ooh, yo, Semity. Also, I should totally be spreading my religion right now. I have the faith for it. I have over 500 faith. Let's get this bad boy spreading. Chariots? Where are these chariots going? I don't even have chariots unlocked. How could... Oh, I guess this is a Maori city, not my city. I thought the tech of the um, city was limited by my tech. It's actually... Because it's not my city, it's not limited by my tech. Okay, some of the AI are on like seven cities. I need I need to stop joking around here. I need to get some settlers out. I've been I've been screwing around. All right, it's turn 71. I'm on two cities because I'm screwing around. Let's fix it. Pay the money. Get the settler card. Only shaved a turn off of this. Amazingly. Sickus Maximus has spread to Jerusalem, the new holy city. Now my hope is to guarantee a very strong golden age in the next era where i can just spam settlers that's my hope and I, I think i might be able to pull that off in fact i think i think i absolutely can pull it off no problemo are you you're building machu picchu already in this city of all cities <laughs> what are you doing dude the ai is wild when you start to actually pay attention to what the ai does in its game you, it's wild what you start to witness another city planned over here with a pair of farms in it if I could snag a city or two over here too, that would be nice. There's a couple of good mountains for it as well. Ooh, this is prime real estate right here for an aqueduct next to a geotherm and a pair of wheat resources. I think I've got my city set up. I got room for one, two, three, four, five cities over here. Plus whoever knows how many I might be able to squeeze in around the map. Now, it looks like I am going to have to kill a couple city-states this game for uh, <coughs> loyalty reasons. Eh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Naturally, the AI has decided that this is the exact tile that they want to stand on. Never mind that it's the tile that I sent my settler to go to, you know, many turns ago, and the AI should not absolutely know exactly where I plan to send my settlers, but it does it anyway, and it always manages to block you on the turn you're going to get there. You know, it's just like, it's completely, you know, yeah, there's no way that the AI knows that that's where I want to go settle. Like, I didn't, you know, there's no way it's like looking at where my units are moving. For sure. There's no way. That can't possibly happen. I, I have a conspiracy theory, okay? My conspiracy theory is that the AI knows when you right click on a tile to send a settler to it, the AI knows. And they plan, they, they're like the, the city states will just block those tiles randomly for no reason. They will just block it because they're like, oh, you want to set a, send a city there? I'm just going to stand on that tile just to be annoying. It, is, it, it, it happened way too often for me to, to be anything but like a, a truther. It has, to, it has to be that way. Like there's no way it's not, it doesn't work that way. Because it's always like a turn after I like stop walking towards that tile, they'll clear it off. If they can forget that that tile exists, watch. I will, I will, I'm going to do the experiment with my next settler. Okay, we shall see. Now, we want to spread this thickness around. Especially towards Colombia, who does not have his own religion. All right, boom, our next settler. Happy days, happy days. We would like to do a little bit of tile purchasing. I want that holy side tile down there, but for now, get yourself a monument. Now, if we're thinking about loyalty, we got to start thinking about Amani. Amani is going to be a helpful engine here. 
for generating some nice score here. We can pop her into Mogadishu, get quick suzerainty of them, generate some error score, and then bish bash bosh be on our way. Let's go ahead and convert Tadmika. We're already in a golden age, which is fantastic. She hates my guts. I can get started on a temple next turn. Oh, these cities are too close together. Oh no. Oh, that's awkward. Hmm. I guess I just move the city up a tile. I mean, I hate it, but it works. You just wait next turn. When the when our next era, that loyalty will be mine. Oh my god, the absolutely huge army here in Mali. Why do they have such a big army? Sitting on an envoy, where shall we send it? I reckon we put it in Wolin because that'll get us plus one production towards our settler production in the capital. Seems like a reasonable use. Now you might say I spent all my faith spreading my religion. Now I don't have any faith to, yeah, you know, build the things I need to build. And you know what? You're right. <clears throat> I did do that. <laughs> I don't have any faith to purchase settlers, but I did hard build my settlers to get them a little bit sooner. So it's fine. It's fine. We're fine. It's okay. We're going to be fine. My settler is closing in on this tile. Perhaps the AI will consider blocking it soon. Oh, look, he's, he's, he's blocking my... Look, look, he stood there. It's not a coincidence. Copium. It's not a coincidence, Copium. Dude, this, this, this swordsman is actually a quarterback, like blocking my settler. It's unbelievable what he's doing right now. It's insane how effectively he is blocking me. All right, this Auckland warrior has four tiles to choose from, okay? Now he could stand here where my settler is planning to walk or he could go any other tile. Where do you think he's going to go? I reckon he's going to try to block me because that's what the AI does. Cuenca converted. Welcome to the thick pyre where only the thickest survive. Look, he did it. He did it. He actually did it. He proved me right. Look, this has to be... This is not just confirmation bias. This is 100% proven and factual. Okay. Let me show you. I'm going to act as if I'm going to go here next turn. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going here. One of these two is going to walk onto that tile. 100% guaranteed. There's no way. I'm not insane. I'm not crazy. This is like, these are things that insane people say all the time. I'm not crazy. I promise. <laughs> oh God. Welcome to the real golden age. Now we're cooking with diesel. We just got state workforce. We're working towards political philosophy. Everything is coming up millhouse. Never mind that the AI totally didn't block the tile like they said it would. It's definitely that one. That one was just, you know, that, that one was just, you know, that was luck. Okay, copium. It definitely works the way I think it does. Copium. I'm 100% right. <clears throat> copium. I wonder, did anyone get any uh, flipped independent cities? Ooh, we got Gior over here looking very flippable. How do you have full loyalty? No, no, no. You have negative loyalty. Yeah, we're good. That city's flipping. Uh, Simon Bolivar, who I picked, and Jade has been picked. I like how a few of us picked Simon Bolivar. I picked him just because he's like the most warlike save, and I was like, eh, I think people will vote for him. Turns out I was right. Let's pop down our settler. Kaboom. A. Eh? Huh? Plus five holy site. Don't you wish you had work ethic now? Kind of. Don't you wish your empire was thick like me, baby? Skadoosh, goodbye, catapult. You wasted your time. Just give me free XP, to be honest. Which, all things considered, things just walking up on my doorstep, experience, that's a pretty good free thing. Oh, we're converting more and more cities to our religion. Maybe we could evangelize. Do something interesting with some evangelization. Political philosophy, baby. Now, I think we want to play Classical Republic as Khmer because we like that housing and the amenities and the great people points also means a lot more faith. And also, holy site, adjacency. Ooh. Now, we definitely want to pick up uh, Monumentality because we want to be able to buy settlers with faith if we can. Although Exodus of the Evangelists is quite good for spreading. I don't think we need to spread right now. I think we could take out colonization if we're doing monumentality. Let me double check that I'm not still building settlers. No, I'm not building settlers. So there, that is the transition. We can transition into monu monumentality, take out the settler card, pop in scripture. And you know what? Urban planning, pretty good card, all things considered. And then we pop in charismatic leader for those extra envoy points. Although maybe, depends on what missions we have really. 
trigger Eurekas, build a district. In my other run, I did have Pantanal, but I was like, I can't, I can't start with a natural wonder. So I was kind of thinking of doing something fun with preserves, but I was like, I can't start with a natural wonder. People will think it's rigged. <laughs> I had to, I had to roll away from that one when I was doing my test game. Any luxuries? Ooh, lots of luxuries available. Boom. Thank you. Extremely cheap as well. Any buyers for strategics? How about some Diplo favor? Hello. Thank you. All right. First settler down over here. Kaboom. And Kaboom. This one has a little bit of a loyalty problem, but that shouldn't be too bad. In the near future. Aqueduct. Holy sight. Right there. Everything is coming up. Mill house. Let's faith purchase a couple of builders because we have some tiles to improve. Otherwise, we'll do a quick yoink on a settler in a few turns. <laughs> There's like a perfectly shaped national park of uncolonized land in the center of my empire. I wonder if I leave that open, will the AI ever try to settle it? I'm kind of curious now. I'm going to leave it blank just to see if that happens. Although theoretically, I could settle a city here and reach a holy site to the water. If by free city you mean free city for me, yoink, three turns until I take that bad boy. Culture is about to explode in my empire. I just got my first Prasant, which is giving me 0 0.5 culture per population. That is a crazy, and I mean crazy amount to be getting per pop. Also, the production in here is kind of gross just because it has so much population. I kind of like it a lot. Do I vote in favor of the military emergency? I'm kind of weak. I'm going to vote it down. I'm going to avoid the old military emergency. So we have our aqueduct. We have our fully built holy site aside from the Gurdwara, which I guess I will purchase a settler and then do the Gurdwara real quick because it's another two food, three faith and a housing. I guess it's worth doing. I feel like I got boxed in by city states, which normally I wouldn't mind too much. Also free city, yoink. But in this particular scenario, I don't particularly love it. Um, I do want to actually pick up aqueducts or uh, harbors real quick. If I'm going to do a celestial navigation city here. Oh, look at that glorious Khmer farm next to an aqueduct. Four food, one production. These are the kind of yields you don't really ever see unless you're playing Khmer. They have such a unique and powerful play style. I super would like to get to level six with Jerusalem, partially for the religious bonus, but also mainly for that extra three faith from my building my Gurdwaras. Because that is a building, I, I, my, my goal here is to maximize my faith come in this er era. And then also somewhat going forward. Now, part of this is the Stockholm Syndrome part. We actually want to start going to war with people and then pillaging all of their tiles to starve their cities. Now that won't happen for a very long time but it is something that we want to do when we get ahead of the AI, just to speed things up a scooch. Let's head towards feudalism because it has that all important extra farm adjacency as well as the plus two builder charge card. I think it's time that we appointed Pingala, popped him into the capital because this is going to be, uh, you know what? I need to also do a couple of settlers. I actually need to save up for two more settlers possibly. Yeah, I think another settler somewhere down here here and here, so I can start to get loyalty pressure on Simon Bolivar and over here. So yeah, there's like three more settlers in the bank that I need to save up for. So I need to stop buying builders for now. This is a minus 20 city, but it shouldn't be. It actually just is. Damn, why is the loyalty so bad in here? Oh, look at this wheat farm next to the aqueduct. Ooh, ooh, that is a beautiful thing to see. I bought so many amenities that my cities are growing at an outrageous rate right now. If you just look at my capital, it's got the plus three amenities that's giving us the 10% growth boost, which means we have a plus 22 food surplus. So this city is growing from just hitting nine population to 10 population in four turns. That is absurd. The loyalty pressure near our capital must be almost insurmountable. Oh my god, even Auckland is almost that negative pressure from citizens. And they usually have a special boost to their citizens' pressure. And it's only near a few of my weak cities that haven't even started to build up yet. You just wait until I reveal my true power level. Let's pick up Connoisseur on Pingala for that plus one culture per turn per citizen in the city. That is worth a whopping nine culture in my capital. Feudalism. 
plus two build charges. Hello and welcome. Get in to my government. It's honestly, it's my favorite card in the entire game. It is so ridiculously powerful. I'm kind of tempted by Anchor Watt this game. We do have the aqueducts for it. I mean, why wouldn't we do it? Seriously, give me a reason why we wouldn't do it. I don't think you can come up with one. Aha, we actually managed to recover the loyalty in Mahendra Pavata. Jesus, look at Anchor Tom, dude. It's got a 30 food surplus with four amenities. Ooh, that is powerful stuff. Now, I do need to get my government plaza because I've decided to go for a different direction this game. I think I'm going to go with the um, audience chamber so I can grow taller cities because I kind of already got all of my uh, cities out without needing to get a government plaza. So it doesn't actually seem necessary for me to do that. I also totally need to pick up a bronze working at this point. I can't delay it anymore. I was kind of trying to delay it so iron didn't appear anywhere. I wanted to put districts or cities or stuff like that. Um, but that, I, you know, I, you can't get away with that forever. There's, there's a limit and we've reached it. You, you can no longer, you know, we, can, we just can't get away with it anymore. It's, it's that simple. Hit him with the pre-chop. Four turns on the government plaza. We do an old pre-chop. Bippity bop. It's only two turns. We can get a campus maybe in the city. Look for a little bit of science. And with that science, maybe we can start doing some pillaging. This kind of like loyalty choke point in between these two major land masses is a bit of a problem. However, I might be able to sneak a couple of cities up here to the north side. Although, mm, maybe not. How is loyalty over here? It's at plus 13, but we haven't hit the next golden age yet. Now, Mali is in a golden age. If he hits a dark age, that might be the time to strike from a loyalty perspective. But we're, we're still only at the beginning of our ramp, dude. We don't even have entertainment complexes. Most of our cities don't have fully built holy sites and aqueducts. We've got a long way to go, is basically what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Maori, what are you doing? Dude, I love Maori. They just, they're, they're wild. They do crazy stuff. Maori is like that dude that you take on the night out who like downs an entire bottle of vodka and then disappears for 30 minutes and then reappears with like a completely different outfit. It's like, what are you doing? Where have you been? Why do you smell like that? Half the time you only ever meet up with that guy and like hear the stories about what they did the next day. Uh, let's pick up the audience chamber for the plus two amenities and four housing. And then pop in Researcher for Pingala to get that extra science in here. And now I think we're looking pretty okay. Like we're at, what, 44 science, 59 culture. I would say we're looking okay as it currently stands because we're only at the beginning of our ramp. So this should close a lot closer than it looks right now. Now this should be an interesting era for us because we actually have a significantly uh, higher amount of golden age points than we need like a significantly higher error score than we than we actually need which could result in some very interesting outcomes for our our loyalty pressure on other empires it might mean that possibly even some of these cities here if he doesn't get a golden age they could start flipping to us because how strong your loyalty pressure is is actually dependent on how much you overshot your golden age score at least in the um in the, the, the Heroic Ages mode, or whatever it's called, the um, Dramatic Ages mode. We got our audience chamber. It's a whole bunch of extra amenities. Campus, I think, is our next goal. We pop that down in there. We would like a theater square and an entertainment complex in here. And honestly, we would also like a commercial hub. There's just so much we have to build. It's kind of nutty. Now, we got a nice front line for loyalty pressure with Grand Columbia. And we're only three turns away from our golden age, which means, oh man, there's a whole bunch of independent cities over here. Oh, baby, the potential, the potential here is incredible. This is going to be one of my finest games. This is going to be a masterpiece, a piece de resistance, a beautiful game helped along by the suggestion of one Bikini Bodhi. I don't even know how to pronounce his name. You know what? Give me the Danish pronunciation. That'll upset him. I heard the Swedes hate the Danes. I was like, dude, what do you got against dogs? You know what I'm saying? They're just, they're just great. Great Danes. I'm here all week. And upon the hour, the eve of change, where we hit the next era, when all will be revealed as to the fate of this game, which cities will flip and which cities shall stand tall, 
that is where I leave you guys. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.